Hi all, welcome to Shankar AIS Academy's daily newspaper analysis, 18th November 2024. Before getting to the today's skill staff articles, let's see important announcement from Shankar AIS Academy. Pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025, batch 3 starts from 21st November 2024. If you want to join this test series, click the link given below in the description and enroll yourself. The another one is Chakra Initiative of Shankar AIS Academy, which is complete coverage of current affairs with the exclusive 50 plus classes and and 8 plus test and 8 plus current affairs based test. If you want to know more about this program, see the brochure which is linked in the description. Without any delay, let's get into the today's list of articles. Today we are going to see four important articles which are taken from different newspapers in prelims point of view. The first article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper which talks about over 10 lakh senior citizens enrolled in Ayushman Y Vandana. In this article, we are going to see in detail about this. The second article, which is taken from the Hindu newspaper, which talks about Unicorn, Naval Warship Agreement signed between India and Japan. The third article, which is taken from the Hindu newspaper, which talks about COP29, happened in the Azerbaijan, which talks about COP29 and India's disagreement towards developed nations. The fourth article, which is taken from the Indian Express, which talks about India's successful test on Long range hypersonic missile. In this article, we are going to see in detail about hypersonic missiles. Without any delay, let's get into the today's discussion. Look at this article which is discussed about India's concerns at COP29, which, which is happened in Baku of Azerbaijan regarding the lack of progress on issue critical developing country. Let's see in detail about COP29, which is 29th conference of parties under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, is taking place in Baku, Azerbaijan. Baku, which is located in Azerbaijan. UNFCC is an international environmental treaty established at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. When it comes to the role of COP29, it is the supreme decision making body of the UNFCC where all member states meet annually to review progress and establish measures to combat climate change. And another one that in this, the theme for the year 2024 is Solidarity for the Green World. Let this, let's move on to the significance of COP29. COP29 which is serves as a platform for countries to discuss policies, share program and negotiate collective action for climate goal. The second one is global climate action. With this, let's move on to the significance of the COP29. It serves as the platform for countries to discuss policies, share progress and negotiate collective action for global climate change. The foremost focus is on reviewing global climate action and finding pathways to limit glo global temperature rise. Pathways to limit global temperature rise. Let's see the India stance in COP29. India expressed their strong disappointment over developed nations not giving adequate attention to challenges faced by developed in climate change action. The second one is India stressed that climate action is difficult without substantial financial and technological aid from wealthier nations. And also India highlighted the need for balanced support that respects each nation's right to set its climate goal based on unique circumstances. And India's delegations pointed out the shifting targets and delayed discussion. Shifting targets and delayed discussions undermine developing countries' ability to manage climate impacts. With this, let's see the issues critical to developing nations. Financial and technical support. Developing countries frequently lack in the resource and technological need to adapt and implement climate-friendly measures. Implement climate-friendly measures effectively. Capacity to adapt. Developing nations have limited capacity to recover and adapt from climate impacts despite contributing less to the problem historically. Equity and fairness. The principle of common but differentiate responsibilities underlines that developed countries being major historical polluters should take greater responsibility for mitigation efforts. Mitigation ambition pressure. Developing countries face pressure to adapt more ambitious, more ambitious climate targets despite their resource constraints, which can hinder socio-economic development of developing countries. To tackle this issue, we have to take some measures. They are financial aid which is from Developed nations like USA, technology transfer, which promotes the transfer of green technology to help developing countries achieving cleaner energy transition and sustainable development. 
Another one is capacity building, which is an initiative to strengthen the institutional and technical capacity of developing nations to manage climate action. And then implementation me mechanism. Establish cleaner mechanism for financial support, technology sharing and joint ventures with developed nations. The last one is global collaboration, which encourage international cooperation for research and development in climate resilience changes, technologies and practices. With this knowledge, let's try to solve prelims practice question. Which of the following statement regarding UNFCC and its COP, UNFCC and its conferences of the conference of the parties is or are correct. First statement, the UNSCC was adopted at Rio Earth Summit in 1992. The second statement is the Paris Agreement which aims to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius was adopted at COP21. The Kyoto Protocol which is adopted at COP3 placed a legally binding emission reduction target only on developing countries. Select the right answer using the code given below. A, 1 and 2 only, B, 2 and 3 only, C, 1 and 3 only and D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is 1 and 2 only. With this, let us move on to next article. Look at this article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper which talks about in India and Japan sign a memorandum of implementation to co-develop Unicorn Must which enhances the self capacity of Indian naval warship under the 2015 India-Japan Defence Technology Cooperation Framework. With this, let's see in detail about Unicorn Months. First, let's see what is Unicorn. Unicorn, which is the acronym of Unified Complex Radio Antenna. It is special for its first co-production with, which is important from the first co-production of Japan and India in defense technology. With this, let's see the key features of this program. The first one is Advanced Antenna Integration, which links, which links 16 antennas, which enabled encrypted data communication among NATO allies and partner nations. The second one is tactical air navigation system which, which provides precise navigation data for shipborne helicopters. The third one is identifi identification of friend or foe antenna which ensures secure identification of friendly vessels and aircrafts. It is designed to differentiate between friendly and hostile forces. It works by sending and receiving coded radio signals to confirm the identity of aircrafts, ship and other vehicles in the operational area. The second feature of this, uh, this the second feature of this unicorn is electronic support measure antennas with the subdivisions of radar detention and communication interception. Let us see this in detail. Radar detection which identifies radio signals from incoming missiles, communication interception which captures enemy communication signals for strategic intelligence. The third one is improved communication range. It uses ultra high frequency antennas for short range communication. The third one is enhanced durability with the, with the help of radome cover. It provides weather and lightning resistant while maximizing radio wave transmissions. This radome cover is made from materials that allows radio waves to pass through while reflecting or absorbing radar signals. The fourth one is stealth capacity. Stealth capacity which is the foremost feature of this program. She integrates multiple antennas into a single column which helps in reducing the ra radar crossing section significantly. It is also enhanced stealth characteristics by minimizing the ship's detectability by enemy radars. The, second, the fifth one is operational efficiency. In this simplified installation and maintenance compared to traditional multi mast setups, it optimizes placement of antennas, increases external radio wave detention range. With this, let us move on to the applications of Unicom MUST. Look at this, these are the key applications of this radar. Here are electromagnetic warfare, techno warfare technology, surveillance technology, applied operation in any warfare with respect to maritime. Applied operation in warfare, which is happened in maritime naval warship, Environ environmental adaptability and enhanced maritime security. That is all about this article. With this information, let us try to solve the prelims practice question. Consider the following statement about the Unicorn Must system. The first statement, it, un it integrates multi antennas into single column, improving stealth and reducing radar crossing section. The second statement is the system includes identification 
friend or foe antennas and tactical air navigation system. The third statement, it enhances maritime security by supporting counter privacy operation and long range surveillances. The fourth statement is, the unicorn must is exclusively used to NATO member countries. Which of the following statement is right? Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 1, 2 and 3. Option C, 1, 3 and 4 only. Option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. The correct answer is 1, 2 and 3 only. Within this, let us move on to next article. Look at this article. This article which talks about over 10 lakh senior citizens aged 70 above enrolled in Aishman via Vandana Yojana within 3 weeks of its implementation. The ministry reported treatments worth rupees 9 crore have been authorized which highlights successful implementation of healthcare benefits under Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana for elderly citizens. With this, let's see in detail about Pradhan Mantri Vaya Vandana Yojana. It was implemented under Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana which was launched in September 23, 2018. With this, let's see in detail about Pradhan Mantri Vaya Vandana Yojana. It was implemented by Life Insurance Corporation, which is LAC, and it's a self-funded scheme and not centrally sponsored scheme. It was launched in the year 2017. Current, current extension, it was extended till March 31st, 2023. Maximum investment limit of this scheme is 15 lakh. The minimum pension is 1000 per month. Maximum pension is 9250 per month. When it comes to policy term, term, it was 10 years and it was regulated by Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It, it has various pension payment models with monthly, quarterly, offerly and yearly basis. Under this, exit options available only in ex exceptional cases. They are critical illness, terminal illness and treatment of specified illness. To this, let's see the objective of the scheme. It provides social security to elderly citizens above 60 years, which ensures fixed pension, financial security, protected elderly population from uncertainties regarding health sector. To this, let's see the eligibility of Pradhan Mantri Y Vandana Yojana. Y Vandana Yojana. The beneficiary should be Indian citizen with the above age of 60. That is no age limit for the scheme. It can be purchased offline or online through LIC. With this, let us see the key benefits of Pradhan Mantri Vaya Vandana Yojana. Guaranteed pension for the 10 years, it can be parted in monthly, quarterly and offerly and yearly basis, return of around 7.4% per annum and also loan facility available up to 75% of purchase price. Tax benefits under ATC of Income Tax Act, return of purchase power to nominee legal hire after death. With this, let us see the Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana in detail. It was launched, it was launched in the year September 23, 2018. It covers the amount of 5 lakh per family for a particular year. It was implemented through National Health Authority of India. It was the world's largest health insurance, assure schemes and it is a centrally sponsored scheme. It was fully funded by central and state government in the ratio of 60 east 40. In terms of in terms of special category states and union territories, the ratio is 90 east 10, which is 90% of fund was contributed by central government and 10% of the fund was released by respective state or union territory. When it comes to union territory without uh, legislature, they are comes under 100% sponsorship under centrally sponsored state. With this, let us move on to the objectives of Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana. It provides health coverage, it reduces out-of-pocket expenses, access to quality health care, which targets poorest and vulnerable communities. It is an comprehensive health coverage insurance in the world. And let us move on to the Pradhan Mantri's Jan Aarogya Yojana eligibility criteria. In rural areas, families identified based on socio-economic caste census 2011 with the multiple deprivation of criteria including housing, landless laborers and manual scavengers. In urban area, occupational criteria including a rag pickers, beggars, domestic workers, there is no restriction on family size, age or gender. It is mandatory for biometric authentication through Unified Identification Technology in India. 
ஆரோக்கியோஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜனாஜ
military operation it targets strategic assets enemy defenses and critical infrastructure with high precision when it comes to nuclear nuclear deterrence it strengthens second strike capabilities as part of india's nuclear triad it acts as a defense shield which counters regional threats among enemies the last one is technological integration which opens avenues for incorporating which are, which opens avenues for incorporating hypersonic capabilities into existing missile system with this information let's move on to advantages of hypersonic missile of india it is known for its unmatched speed striking accuracy interception resistance versatility and technical technological synergy these are the advantages of hypersonic missile of india which makes milestone and india and put india into the global stage with the information about long range hypersonic missile of india let's try to solve the prelims practice question what advantage does a hypersonic missile offer over traditional missile systems statement 1 high speed makes interception difficult capable of carrying multiple payloads extended range ensures strategic dominance choose the correct answer option a 1 and 2 only option b 2 and 3 only option c 1 and 3 only option d 1 2 and 3 the correct answer is option d 1 2 and 3 i have another one important announcement from shankar ais academy which is regarding current affairs monthly marathon which is posted eventually second week of every month in in our youtube channel do check it which is completely relies on upcoming preliminary examination with this we come to the conclusion if you like this video hit the like button do comment and share the video to your friends don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you for watching